The stove is on and the pot is cooking. Welcome back to Stir the Pots, the show where our takes are colder than Washington, D.C. I'm here with Adam Godkin, one of Citrus TV's men's lacrosse beat reporters. He works for Orange Fizz, Z89, everything on campus, basically, Adam Godkin does. Adam, how cold is D.C. actually? It was really hot, actually, when I was just there last year. It was, like, up in the 70s. Really? It's kind of like it is here where, like, it can be, like, 70 degrees or 30. It just depends on the day. <laughs> uh, there was, like, snow this year for the first time in forever in D.C. But right now, pretty hot, actually. I mean, yeah. Th- th- there are some cities in the country that, you know, have that bipolar weather. Oh, uh, yeah. That's D.C. And I-, I know, like, where I'm from, you know, one day it'll be, like, sunny and 90, and then the next day it's just rain nonstop. Yep, yep. Um, you know, it happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. But nonetheless, D.C., pretty cold. Now, really quick, I'll ask you before we jump right into our stuff because we have some March Madness to talk about. But are you excited to be on the Cape this summer with the Born Braves? Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. I mean, I, I'm not, like, the biggest beach guy in the world, but I'm excited <laughs> to, like, actually embrace the beach and be able to go all the time. Uh, it's 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 going to be a great time. I couldn't be more excited for it. Definitely. And you'll be working with, obviously, a former sous chef of mine, Gabe Perrin, as oh, well. Yeah. Um, and, you know. Living with him. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the defending two-time champions of the Cape Cod Baseball League. So I hope you have fun over Thank in you. the Cape this summer. But nonetheless, like I said, we're just going to jump straight into our prize picks for today. Because not only is this camera saying that we have 30 minutes here, but also, I mean, again, like I said, we have March Madness to talk about. And we, <laughs> we want to get into Adam Godkin's bracket. So nonetheless, our prize picks begin with last week's results from Pi Day. Tyler beat me 2-0. So, so sous chefs are now down 7 after at one point being down 11 do you think you can bring them back i don't know i mean we got a bunch of nba lines here i I am a college basketball guy through and through i I can't tell you the last time i watched an nba game but you know we'll see it maybe maybe. hey hey march and april you know nationwide it seems like you know nba kind of takes a step back uh you know to college basketball you know just because i mean march madness there's nothing like it in the world so no there's not in november nba takes a step back for me i'm I'm college basketball from november on i mean hey i respect it i respect (laughs) it it's always fun to look at the metrics and stuff nonetheless but beginning our our price picks for today we have demontis sabonis 45 and a half points, rebounds, and assists combined versus the Toronto Raptors. Sabonis is on a tear this season, getting double doubles left and right. The Kings, obviously, you know, they're in playoff contention. And after building this young core and getting all the way to game seven of the first round last year, I mean, again, Sabonis, I think he should have been an all star this year. You know, he's putting up like, like 20. 13 and 7 somewhere around that range and i mean for this line though 45 and a half is steep but um you know raptors don't have uh pascal siakam anymore i'm gonna call for like maybe 46 or 47 for sabonis for sabonis tonight give me over uh yeah i'm gonna go with the under i mean I 45 it. is a lot that's I mean, what i'm you're, saying you're going 25 <laughs> points 10 rebounds five like that's a lot like that's i don't know i mean i just just based on how high that is uh, i'm gonna say under and, and probably assume he goes like 44 ish but you know, we'll see yeah I'm, I'm sure that he he's probably gonna get around 41 or, or 42 sabonis is usually good for that um and obviously you know the recent uh stats from his last five games are gonna affect that so we'll see how he performs tonight and we're also gonna have to see if shea gilgis alexander can get six assists or not because that is our second line unfortunately now you have three options here. You have over, under, or exact. And in the past, we've actually had lines similar to this where they go exact and one of us goes like over or under and we end up missing yeah. the, the point as a whole. But nonetheless, for Shea, you know, unfortunately, this is right around his range. Vegas knows. But for this line, I'm going to keep it brief here. I think he's a slightly better rebounder than he is in his sister. So give me barely under six assists for Shea Gilchis Alexander. I'll go with exact. Uh, up against the Jazz, not a great team. I, I think that they might try and double him a lot. And then, you know, there could be open spots. So exact, six. I, I, re- it. Hey, I, I respect that pick. And honestly, if, if you get it, then kudos to you. <laughs> so should be interesting to see how this line plays out. And it also should be interesting to see if Tyrese Halliburton can get out of his three-point shooting slump in the month of march he is shooting 17 percent from beyond the arc i have no idea what's going on with mr halliburton lately but seven and a half threes i mean honestly i'll go with like eight or nine threes attempted just because i feel like i see halliburton just chucking up shots at at, at a pretty good rate 
I'm going under. The play, playing the Pistons, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to have to shoot a lot of threes. I, I, mean, I mean, the Pistons are awful S- somehow, I think, right now, better than my Washington Wizards. But, like, you know, it, it, they are better, actually. But the Pistons are one of the worst teams in the league. I don't think he'll have to shoot that many threes. But I, I think there's a chance just trying to get out of that slump. Right. But I, I just I imagine he's not going to play that much, too. No, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, that always happens, you know, when uh, the best teams go against some of the lower echelon teams in the league, they tend to set their starters, and obviously, you know, like you said, he could either, you know, try to just keep shooting to figure out what's going wrong, or he could shoot less, because he's been shooting so poorly lately, so we'll see what happens when Tyrese Halliburton and the Pacers play the Pistons tonight, and that's going to close out our prize picks lines for this week, and we're going to jump right into our two brief headlines, both some recent NFL signings, have, and they're actually both one-year signings. As well, Chase Young going to the Saints, Mike Williams going to the Jets. Both of these very interesting signings. Obviously, a lot of teams were worried about Chase Young and his neck problems towards the end of the season. That's why you know not a whole lot of teams were interested in signing him. And same thing with Mike Williams. Obviously, he's had a couple of injuries over the last few years, and I mean he's supposed to be another weapon for a you know should be healthy Aaron Rodgers but nonetheless like I said both of these very interesting signings yeah it is I mean I mean Chase Young I don't understand 13 million he, he can't stay on the field he hasn't been healthy since he <laughs> sorry since he had You're his what, rookie season in, in DC and tore his ACL I mean I love Chase Young initially number two overall pick with my commanders yeah but that's a that's a big overpay the Jets uh, we were joking about this earlier but they might not, not might not have a quarterback because he, he might be the vice president of this country <laughs> So, so, so we'll see. I mean, they're going to need all all the help that they can get. I mean, who's the backup now? Is, is it Zach Wilson? Is it, yeah. I, I don't even know like what's going on with the Jets. So I, I guess you need more receivers. But that's an interesting team. Two, two interesting signings that oh, no, I, no. I don't fully understand. Yeah, one thousand percent. I mean, if anything, I feel like if Chase Young does, does stay healthy, then he could be the long term replacement for a guy like Cameron Jordan. And then over on the New York side of things, I mean, again, this is really just a signing to, you know, try to, I guess, I mean, I'm assuming go all in if you're New York in this situation with a quarterback, like you said, who is towards the end of his career, obviously, might be vice president. Uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, that's a joke. But nonetheless, like Adam said, like I said, two very interesting signings here in the NFL. But the entire landscape as a whole of the league is going to be very, very different in 2024, 2025. So we'll have to keep looking forward to opening day. But now, like I said, it's time for March Madness, everybody's favorite time of year. One of, if not the best postseason tournament in North American sports. Oh, the best. Oh, best yeah. in the world. Oh, yeah. No, there's absolutely nothing like it. I mean, the, the, the drama, the, you know, the triumph of victory the agony of defeat it's it's all it is a whirlwind of emotions that cannot be explained any other way than through this tournament and now we're gonna have adam godkin actually give us i mean i'm assuming you've already made some brackets so another one of his brackets here um whether or not he goes you know all in on his research style based bracket or just a fun bracket who knows we'll have to see right now when adam godkin begins his bracket and now we're going to start in the east region with the number one overall team in the country the yukon Huskies only losing three games so far this season. I mean, this is far and away the best team in basketball right now. It, it is. I think it's one of the only teams without any holes. I think Danny Hurley is my favorite coach in the country. Uh, I, I want to start off with this. I, I am historically very good w- with March Madness brackets. I've won a lot of polls, uh, pools. I, I've had brackets top 2,000 nationally in ESPN. Really? But – I'm kind of changing up this year what I normally do. Usually I'll make a lot of brackets. This year I'm I'm going one bracket that I truly – I'm still making a couple to just fill it up. One that I truly believe in, and it's just going off of vibes. I I watch so much college (laughs) basketball. I I consume so much content throughout the year. I'm kind of just like believing in myself because, you know, it doesn't matter how much research goes in. What makes this tournament so great is that you never know what's going to happen. So if anything, I'm just going to believe in myself, believe in my stuff, believe in you know just my overall thoughts, and maybe it'll carry me. Maybe it'll work, or, or maybe I should have gone back to what, what's worked for me in the past. But you know, I, I'm truly believing in myself, and th- this is it's a vibes bracket. But I, I believe in it, and, and I love it right now. Oh yeah, no, for sure. That's always. You know, U- UConn wins, by the way. The, n- okay. No chance for stats. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. The first game, obviously, both of us, but specifically Adam here, is going to go with UConn over Stetson. But, yeah, like you said, you know, I feel like you have to have that perfect balance of, you know, stats and research. And also, just like you said, you know, you, if you look at a matchup and you're like, you know what? 
it's not their day. It's the other team's day. And so, like I said, you've got to have that perfect uh, balance. And so for the first game, you're going to go with UConn over Stetson. Pretty obvious pick here. Like I said, number one overall seed in the tournament. Our next game here, one of the ones that's actually tripping me up a lot for some reason, FAU and Northwestern. Obviously, FAU coming off of a Final Four berth. And a Northwestern team that has really stepped it up. They beat Purdue in the regular season. And also, I feel like Northwestern fans just in general of their athletic programs are some of the most, you know, down to well, I, mean, I'm, I don't want to say down to earth, but they're some of the most passionate ones in college sports. Yeah, th- this is an interesting game, as he said. FAU coming back from a Final Four run, and they return pretty much all of their production. But, but they had a weird year, you know, beat Arizona. I remember watching that game and thinking, oh, my gosh, this team is great, but had a number of quad three, quad four losses. And I do think that this Northwestern team is, is going to win. I've, I've liked this program for a while. I think that Boo Booey is, is an incredible player. It's a great name. Oh, yeah. like names – like that I feel like do well in this sport like it's one of the dumb things but like it, it it's just like a thing and, and I think that what Northwestern is able to do down the stretch in a lot of games beating Purdue this year that you know, beat Purdue last year I, I like Northwestern here for sure I mean like you said you know they always at least you know it seems for the most part they are able to you know really kick it into that fourth gear in the final 10 minutes of their games. And like you said, obviously picking up a few key wins in the regular season. So that sets up a UConn and Northwestern matchup in the second round. And now is one of the 5-12 upsets that, I mean, at least from what I've seen, some people are actually, you know, wouldn't they wouldn't mind taking. And that's number five seed San Diego State against University of Alabama Birmingham. I mean, again, this is uh, literally one of the other Final Four teams from last year, and it's crazy how three out of four of them are in the same region this year. No, it's absurd. Uh, This this is one of the five twelves that I'm not going to go with. Okay. I I mean, UAB is is one of the bid stealers. They, They would not have been in regularly. Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get into this as we go further down the bracket. I don't know exactly how to feel about the Mountain West, but I, I think San Diego State is good enough to get it done. I think that Jaden Ladee is a good enough point guard. You know, UAB doesn't have Jelly Walker anymore. I just I don't think UAB is that good of a team. I, I think they're almost more of like a thirteen than than a twelve. I, I, I think this is an easy win for SDSU. I respect it. I respect it. Obviously, you know, SDSU, a gritty defensive team. Like you said, they have a, a guard that is averaging 21 points per game this season, one of the highest scorers in the country. And, I mean, obviously, you know, there was a lot of hype around the Mountain West this year because every every single team had a non-conference winning record this year, which is absolutely absurd. So you obviously see the Mountain West getting a lot of bids here. This is obviously not going to be the last team from that conference. And now moving on to a 4-13 and matchup, Auburn versus Yale. I mean, I'm assuming you're going to go with Auburn here. Yeah. Just, just won the SEC tournament. Uh, you know, Yale... I respect the Ivy Leagues, but for this game, they're playing They're playing an Auburn team that, honestly, I wouldn't doubt it. They make the Sweet 16. Yeah, no, I, I think this Auburn team is, is very good. You know, just won the SEC, as you said. Yale should not be in this tournament. I mean, they almost <laughs> lost to Brown, who won 13 games in the regular season in the Ivy League final. Somehow, you know, Brown just gave up an easy bucket on a buzzer beater. If this is Princeton out of the Ivy, maybe i pick him. But, you know, I, I think Auburn's on a roll right now. I don't necessarily always go with conference champs. Champions always go with teams who have been playing well recently. You'll see that as, as the bracket goes on because I think that with the whole week off, everything kind of changes. But I think this is Auburn. Okay. I res- uh, yeah, obviously, you know, I respect it. I do think that Auburn has been a, a very, I mean, for the most part, a very consistent team all season long. And you saw Bruce Pearl, you know, uh, really allowing himself to feel the emotions of winning the SEC tournament. A really, uh, just a stand-up guy. And the Tigers, like a lot of people are saying, could be one of those teams that even though they're not a top two seed, they could potentially go deep in this tournament. So very interesting stuff there. And now rounding out the East region with these last four games, uh, we have BYU here. BYU versus 11th seeded Duquesne. I mean, this is... (laughs) Just a funny name here, Duquesne, <laughs> D- Duquesne University. Um, you know, th- again, this is one of those where it's like, are you going to go with a, a BYU team that has really stepped it up this year, or are you just going to say, why not, and go with Duquesne? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, th- I will say this is my chalkiest region uh, by far. Okay. I'm, I'm going with BYU here. The, the BYU should be a five seed. They, they didn't want to play on Sunday, so, so they gave them a six. 
Duquesne's a great story. There, there's no world in which this Duquesne team should be an 11 seed. The A-10 was not good this year at all. I, I mean, I don't think Dayton's that great, and, and they're a pretty high seed. It's a great story. Coach Dan brought, you know, LeBron James is high school coach, retiring after the tournament, but I don't think Duquesne's good at all. I, I think this is an easy win for BYU. Yeah, no, it, it, it makes sense. Obviously, like you said, BYU, more talented, more just explosive as a whole, so... Adam Gawkins is going to go with BYU here over 11 seeded Duquesne in the round of 64. And now we have Illinois versus Moorhead State. Illinois winning the Big Ten tournament, defeating Wisconsin in the final. Um, me personally, I would go with Illinois here. I think that they are that they're a very good team. Obviously, the Big Ten, very competitive basketball conference. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Again, this is my chalkiest region. Just yeah. another chalk pick here. I think Illinois is a great team. I think Terrence Shannon is awesome at first. And then they have a bunch of guys who can really contribute. You think about Quincy Garrier, former Syracuse guy. Marcus Damascus is a great shooter. I just I really like this Illinois team, and I don't think Moorhead State gives them any trouble at all. For sure. Terrence Shannon, obviously one of the best players in the country this year. So Adam Gottke is going with the fighting Illini in this matchup and now we have Washington State who has made the tournament for the first time since is it 07 or 09? Well, it's, it's a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a very long time for Wazoo and they're going up against 10th seeded Drake who for some reason seems like they always find a way to get a lower seed in the NCAA tournament but are you going to go with Drake or Wazoo here? Yeah, this, this is one of the more popular upsets and it's one yeah. that I believe in. I, I think this is a Drake team that's really good. I mean, Drake should have beat San Diego State last year in the first round but Tucker DeVries plays the worst game of his career he's a star he's one of the best players in the country you know there, there was so much talk and hype around indiana state in the missouri valley with robbie avila and yes he was so fun to watch but you know, this drake team is really good i don't i don't think the pac-12 was was incredible this season so so i've got drake and tucker devries to you know rebound from his horrible performance last year in the tournament for sure, I respect it. You know, there's and that seems to be a trend here with a lot of teams is that they're looking to bounce back from their postseason performance last year. So Adam is going to go with Drake here, and now I'm assuming that we're going to yeah, we're going Iowa State. Yeah, we'll keep it I, short. I, Iowa State. I, I, Iowa State just won the Big Twelve championship. Could have been that final one seed if it wasn't for the selection committee's interesting decisions here in this year's tournament. And now moving on to the West region, arguably one of the weakest just in history as a whole. I mean. It, I, I don't really understand how this region managed to get put together, but nonetheless, one seed in North Carolina is facing Wagner, who just won last night, and I think I saw some stat where it was like, North Carolina has more all-time college basketball wins than they have students, which yeah. is just crazy. That, that, that makes sense. You know, Wagner, small school on Staten Island. This is a UNC win. I don't think UNC will face a test for a while in this tournament. For sure. I mean... Obviously, UNC, perennial basketball uh, powerhouse, and obviously they have fifth-year Arm Armando Baycott, who's been having a pretty good year for himself nonetheless. And now for the game that potentially UNC would have to see who the winner of will be, it's the 8-9 matchup between Mississippi State and Michigan State. Are you going Izzo or the Bulldogs? Do you think Izzo gets another first-round win? I, I do. I, I don't love this Michigan State team, but you know, Josh Hubbard on, on Mississippi State is just a freshman. I don't necessarily trust freshmen in March all the time, and, and because of that, uh, I'm going with Izzo, you know, the, the, the January, February yeah. Izzo. <laughs> and I, so I, I think that this Michigan State team is going to be able to get it done, but you know, th this is a 50-50. 50 game one that I'm not sure no matter what I think the winner gets beat by North Carolina my strategy for brackets I don't really care much about these first round games they're not what win you pools for me brackets are what teams make it to the elite eight the sweet 16 that's what wins you pools I don't really care about this game but because you have to pick I'm going to pick Michigan State I respect it obviously Tom Izzo has always gotten his first round dub so it'll be interesting to see how 19 and 14 Michigan State performs in the first round and now moving on to the St. Mary's Gales versus Grand Canyon University. Obviously, again, it's one of those where I'm sure that, you know, non avid college basketball fans see Grand Canyon and they're like, that seems fun. However, do you feel the same way? I do. I, I like Grand Canyon here. I just, I, I don't love this St. Mary's team. I think that Gonzaga out of the WCC is a lot better than people are saying. 
I don't think St. Mary's is that good this year. If you looked at their non-conference schedule, very bad. Didn't didn't play anyone. You know, lost to Missouri State, Xavier, Utah. A lot of bad losses. No good wins, and and then just coasting through conference play. You know, yes, they beat Gonzaga, but I, I don't think this is a great St. Mary's team. And I think that Bryce Drew with Grand Canyon's a great coach. I think that he's done a great job with with this Grand Canyon program over the past couple of years, and because of that. Uh, I've, I've got them moving on. I just I don't trust the St. Mary's team. I wouldn't doubt it if Grand Canyon can pick up this win here in the first round. Obviously, the WCC, you know, not one of those conferences where like a lot of eyes are on them every year. I mean, outside of Gonzaga and St. Mary's, who usually are in the tournament, but nonetheless, Adam is going to go with Grand Canyon here. And now this is another upset that I've been seeing actually a, a pretty good amount of brackets picking, and that is four seed Alabama the number one scoring offense in the country versus number 13, Charleston. What are you going to do here? Yeah, I, I agree. I have the upset here. Do we remember what happened with Alabama last year? Uh, this this run-and-gun style for Nate Oates just hasn't worked in, in tournament play. I think Charleston matches up with them well, going 10 deep. Their starters really only play uh, about half of the game. It's a team that takes care of the ball well, is going to be able to at- match Alabama's three-point shooting. So, I mean, I've got, I've got Charleston here. You know, Charleston's been really good the past past couple of years last season they were incredible and and I think that th- they're going to be able to get it done I, I just I, I don't trust Alabama in March I respect it I mean obviously like you said they had a shortcoming last year when they were the number one overall seed so should be interesting to see how that game plays out and now we have one of Adam's personal favorites in this tournament and that is the six-seeded Clemson Tigers facing New Mexico another Mountain West team here I'm pretty sure that you're going, you're going with the Tigers. Yeah, you said it there. One of my personal favorites. You know, this, this is an upset that it feels like everyone's picking. You know, New Mexico, I, I think, is a great team. But if they didn't win their conference, they would not have been in the tournament. The committee said it, and that's for a reason. I, I think this Clemson team just, to me, gives off like the vibes of having a deep run. I don't fully know what it is. I think that the defense is a lot better than people give credit to. And then I think the, the P.J. Call, Hall and Ian Shefflin down low are just going to be too much for New Mexico to handle. I, I think that Joe Girard is going to knock down threes. I mean, I, I just like envision it in my head of, of Joe Girard just going off in the tournament. Uh, it's it's a veteran team. It's an old team. Uh, and, you know, if you look what this team did in the non-conference, beating Alabama, beating TCU, you know, beating North Carolina later in the year, I, I think that after a week off, after playing probably its worst game of the season in the ECC tournament, Clemson's going to be able to rebound and, and take care of New Mexico. But I, I do really really worry about this game. I mean, this is the one game that I'm going to be locked into 3 p.m. on Friday because I love Richard Patino in New Mexico, but I like Clemson here. I, yeah, for, for sure. Obviously, like you said, Ian Shefflin, P.J. Hall, a dominant one-two punch down low in the paint. So Adam's going to go with Clemson here. And now we're going to rip through these. We're going to rip through these final three games here in the West region. And that's going to be three-seeded Baylor versus 14 Colgate, Dayton versus Nevada, and, of course, the, the two-seed Arizona versus Long Beach State, who just cracked their way into the NCAA tournament. Are you going with the Bears or the uh, the Raiders? Uh, I mean, Colgate's in it every year. They're never they're never able to get the upset. So I've got Baylor. I've also got Arizona. And, and then in between those, I've got Nevada. I said earlier, Ooh. I don't think the A-10 is very good. Duquesne, I don't think, is that good. I, I don't trust the state and team. I don't understand how they're a seven-seed at all. So, all right, so I've got Nevada there. Okay, yeah, no, for, for sure. I mean, I feel like the 7, 10, 8, 9 is always the most popular upsets to pick here. I also have Nevada in some of my brackets for some reason. I just, you know, I guess I guess it's really just nostalgia from the Martin brothers being there a few years ago. But nonetheless, that's going to round out the West region. And now moving on to the South region, the now we have the Houston Cougars who – Potentially could have been the number one overall seed had they won the Big 12 championship. But nonetheless, they face off against Longwood and will, if they win, either play Nebraska or A&M, which, again, one of those interesting games. I'm assuming you're going to go with the Cougars here? Yeah, Houston for sure. Okay. All right. And now we have the 8-9 matchup, like I said, Nebraska versus Texas A&M. Obviously, you know, A&M being an SEC team and also just being A&M in general, I'm sure that a lot of fans are picking them. But are you going to go with them or the Huskers? Uh, I'm going with A&M. And Nebraska's never won an NCAA tournament game. I think they're the only Power 6 team to never do it. Wow. And I just, like, I can see Tominaga going off and Tominaga being a, a true Cinderella-type guy who everyone in the country falls in love with, but uh, they, they've never won a tournament game before. 
I just I don't see it this year. I think Hoiberg's a great coach, but uh, again, I think Wade Taylor is is an awesome player for A and M, and I think that this A and M team was was really good throughout the year. For sure, for sure. Obviously, you know, A and M had a better season last year than they did this year, so should be interesting to see if they can pull off another first round win this year. And now we have two. I mean, uh, one of these upsets is more popular than the other. Obviously, the James Madison Dukes having themselves a great season and obviously riding the hype of their football team as well. They're going to go up against the five-seeded Wisconsin Badgers who, like we mentioned, went to the Big Ten Championship final this year. Are you going to go with the Dukes or keep the Wisconsin Badgers hot streak running? Yeah, I've got the Dukes here. Wisconsin was awful before the Big Ten tournament. I, I imagine that they regressed to the mean. I mean, they, they were great early in the season, got up to the top ten, but uh, since then just, just have not been good whatsoever. I, I trust this James Madison team, you know, you know, beating Michigan State to start the year. Uh, they've won on the road, won in tight situations. You know, Just two of the losses came to the same team. Uh, I, I trust this JMU squad, and I, I, I just I don't trust wisconsin just with how bad they were all throughout the year and, and i i don't think that they match up very well i think that jamie is going to push the pace and dominate makes sense yeah obviously you know james madison like we mentioned coming into this game with a lot of personal momentum so should be cool to see how the dukes perform in march and now we have duke versus vermont who vermont back-to-back tournament appearances again they're one of those teams that always you know manages to get in just because of their conference but nonetheless are you going to go with the perennial powerhouse duke here yeah, I mean, Vermont's always in it. It's like Colgate, though. Until they get it done, I'm not going to pick it. Okay, for sure. John Shire's squad moves on here in Adam Godkin's bracket. And now we have another one of these games that's going to have a lot of eyeballs on it just because of the fact that NC State is the first ever double-digit seeds win the ACC tournament. Are you going to go with the Wolfpack or the Red Raiders? Texas Tech. I, I, without, I, I didn't even have to think about this one. The NC State run was awesome. It was magical. It, it was one of the best experiences of my life to be courtside for all of it. But... Uh, after a week off, the momentum just isn't there anymore, and because of it, I, I think it's Texas Tech without a doubt. For sure. They're obviously going to be fatigued playing five games in five days, so Adam has the Red Raiders. And now we're going to go here to the 314 matchup of this region, Kentucky versus Oakland. Obviously, Coach Cal. It's always, Kentucky. I mean, okay. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Coach Cal. It's Kentucky. No no words needed here. No, and no, now, no word. that, that's, that's an obvious one for me. Oh, for sure. And now we have the 7-10 matchup of this region, Florida, who had themselves a pretty good season season in the SEC versus the winner of Boise State and Colorado. That game is yet to be played, but are you going to go with a potential last four in team or the Florida Gators? I'm, I'm going with one of the last four in teams. You know, these teams always find a way to have success in March. Florida just had a massive injury. I, I think no matter who it is, they'll win this game. I think probably Boise, and, and I trust them to go on a bit of a run. Okay, I respect it. Obviously, like Adam said, there's always one of those last four teams that seems to, you know, really find that second gear in the tournament and end up going on a pretty decent run. So should be interesting to see if the Boise State team can go far in the tournament. And now, finally, I'm assuming you're going to give Marquette at least one win in this tournament, yeah, re- regardless of Tyler Kolek's health. I think if there's any 15 seed that has a chance, it, it is Western Kentucky because of the pace that they play at and how efficient they are. But, I mean, this is Marquette first round. Okay, I respect it. Obviously, you know, Marquette coming from a really strong Big East conference. And like we mentioned, Tyler Kolek, still pretty questionable uh, his health for this tournament. So we'll see what happens when Marquette takes on Western Kentucky. And now we're going to go through this Midwest region here pretty quickly. The final one seed is the Purdue Boilermakers. Obviously, you know, Zach Eady, one of the best players in the country. However, you know, there's obviously going to be. It's not that... happening, Ricky. It's not happening again. There's no. no they're not, they're not no, losing. They're not no, losing no. again. No, 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 not in the first round at no, least. No, no, no. But I mean, you know, it's okay. So we have we have Purdue going here. Obviously, you know, like I said, Zach Eady, one of the best players in the country. And even though there's going to be some, you know, questions about, you know, after what happened last year, but that doesn't happen. But back to back years of the same team doing the same thing, not happening here. However, does Utah State take down the TCU Horn Frogs? No, I mean I, I don't love the Mountain West again. I think this is a TCU team that's built for March and how they push pace and get offensive rebounds. So I, I've got TCU here. For sure, I respect it. Obviously, the Big Twelve, one of the best conferences in college basketball. People, here. people forget that before last year, the Mountain West was historically awful and never won in the tournament. And because San Diego State made it last year, I feel like everyone's believing. I'm still not. Yeah, no, and obviously, like you said, because of their deep run, they bring that momentum into the conference, and then they, you know, 
like because of that, you know, I feel like that puts a lot of uh, hype around the Mountain West this year, especially like you mentioned. But nonetheless, should be interesting to see how the Utah State Aggies perform. And now we have again another one of these upsets that I that I, I feel like a lot of people are going with here, and that is McNeese over Gonzaga. But are you are you feeling the same way? Nah, I think this is an easy win for Gonzaga. I think this is a Gonzaga team that I actually do like. I mean, I didn't watch a ton of WCC play this year, but I thought that they were pretty good in Maui. And, I mean, McNeese is not good. Will Wade's a great coach. You read off some of the teams that, that McNeese State beat this year. They beat, like, Bible study. They, they beat Mississippi University for women. Like, they played literally no one. One of the easiest non-conference schedules in the country. Yes, they beat Michigan. Michigan is awful this year. Right. I, I don't think this McNeese State is good. They haven't played anyone. They haven't beat anyone. This is this is Gonzaga. I, I don't like the talk of this upset at all. I, resp- I mean, I, I respect it. Obviously, you know, McNeese only losing three games this year and then ultimately winning the Southland Conference Tournament. Um, actually, that, that's the conference that my hometown's school is actually in, uh, A&M Corpus. They were in it last year, but obviously they got beat by Alabama. But nonetheless, Adam is going with the Zags here. And now we're moving on to the 413 matchup here. Kansas versus Samford, a Samford team that actually had a pretty good year for the most part. Um, in in college basketball in 2023-2024. In However, this is obviously the Kansas Jayhawks team that is in their 34th consecutive March Madness tournament. I mean, Bill Self, even they've been in the tournament every year, even before Bill Self was the coach. Crazy. Yeah, but I think this is one of his worst teams, and I, I think that this is a perfect game for Sanford. Sanford is one of the deepest teams in the country. They have 10 guys who play at least 12 minutes a game. They fire up threes, and, and this game is being played in Salt Lake City at altitude. I think that they're going to be able to run the floor. Kansas has so many injuries. They're not deep at all. They have absolutely no depth. You know, with Kevin McCuller getting rolled out, Hunter Dickinson is hurt. Is he going to be playing? I think that this is an awful matchup for Kansas. Add on the fact that it's being played at altitude. I think that Sanford comes out and wins this game. I mean, I mean, for for a 13 seed, I think that this is this is a, feel not an easy upset, but this is an upset that I really believe in. Kansas is just a seven and a half point favorite in, in a four thirteen matchup. Yeah, I'm. I wouldn't doubt it. Like he said, Kevin McCuller obviously is injured for March Madness, and he will miss the tournament. So it's unfortunate for the Jayhawks, but nonetheless, Adam has Samford moving on here. And now we have another one of the interesting matchups here in March Madness. You have six-seeded South Carolina, who had a very, very good year this year against an Oregon Ducks team that is led by a very, very good coach. Yeah, I mean, Dana Altman's incredible. I, I said earlier that I don't love conference champions like like NC State, but I think Oregon's a different case because of just the injuries all throughout the year. That, that team is finally healthy, and I think that you know, South Carolina's been great this year. You know, they, they've done a great job, but I, all throughout the year, I didn't think that they were that good of a team in the SEC, and because of it, I, I've got Oregon winning this game. I, I trust Dana Altman here, and it's because of the fact that this team is finally healthy. That's why they lost at the beginning of the year. You know, so many. I mean, you remember the Syracuse game. They had like six players. So, so I mean, I, I trust Oregon here. I, I think it's a close one. But yeah, you know, I think whoever plays is going to get murdered by Creighton in the next round. So again, it's one of those ones that I don't really care that much. But I'm picking Oregon. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those ones where it's like you have to pick, but you're just waiting, itching to get into the second round where you know the team that they'll face is going to beat them, at least from what you can see. And that proves that Adam is going to go with Creighton here. Obviously, again, a perennial March Madness favorite in the first two rounds, at least. Uh, you know, they play very consistent basketball every single year. So the Creighton Blue Jays move on here. And now... Our final two games, the 7-10 and the 2-15 matchup, Texas versus Colorado State Rams, who just won last night after beating a Virginia team that had obviously a lot of questions around it. Are you going to go with the Longhorns or the Rams here? Yeah, I've uh, I've, I've got um, the uh, Longhorns winning this one, and I've got I've got Tennessee as well. I've got chalk to, to round this out. Uh, I, I think Colorado State played great. I don't see it again. They're not my first four team that moves on. And, and Tennessee, I mean, I think this this is Rick Barnes' this is like year that he finally has it all, at least right now, at least for the first couple rounds. So I think, for me, those were two pretty easy picks. So we have both UTs moving on to the second round in Adam Godkin's bracket. So that's going to round out the Midwest region. And now we are in the round of 32 here with UConn versus Northwestern. Again, a very interesting matchup here. And, I mean, Adam said here, he thinks that UConn is going all the way. So that means that 
he has the Yukon Huskies advancing to the Sweet 16 and beating the Northwestern Wildcats. And now we have a very, very, what should be a very competitive matchup here between San Diego State and the Auburn Tigers. Who moves on? Uh, I, I trust Auburn here. Again, it's my anti-Mountain West thing. I, I don't think that San Diego State has it. I think that this is a good Auburn team that, you know, when it's shooting the ball well, it's, it's really working. The Bruce Pearl story, as he said earlier, you know, him doing this for his dad, I think is great for March. It's one of those storylines that I think can roll on a little bit. So because of that, I've got Auburn going to the second weekend. I respect it. You know, obviously, like like you said, there's always going to be a lot of emotions in March Madness every single year. So it should be fun to see how the San Diego State team performs against an Auburn Tigers team who, like we all know, just won the SEC tournament. And now you have BYU versus Illinois. Again, very, very interesting matchup here. Do the, do the fighting Illini continue their momentum in March? This is one of the games that I've really been struggling with. You know, the, the Big Ten never does great in March, right. but I just... I like Illinois enough. I've liked this team throughout the entire season. You know, I said all the guys earlier. I forgot Coleman Hawkins. I mean, he's awesome. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the country. And so because of that, I'm going to go with Illinois here. I wouldn't be shocked if BYU wins. I mean, the whole bottom half of this region. I then have Iowa State beating Drake, but both of them are the same. I wouldn't be shocked with either result. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. This is obviously a, like I said, obviously we know, very interesting matchup here. But nonetheless, that's Adam's pick to go into the Sweet 16. And now we have Drake versus Iowa State, the Big 12 champions against Drake here. Do you have the Hawkeyes going again? again or, sorry, Cy- Cyclones, rather. Cyclones. Yeah, again, I wouldn't be shocked if Drake wins this game, if Tucker DeVries goes off, but I think this Iowa State team has everything that it takes. The defense is great, as always, but the offense has you know, really taken it to the next level this year, and so I think they're going to be able to get it done. You know, I-, I hate having one, two, three, four, but I, I also think that you know, this is such a top-heavy region that it's, just, it's what it's going to be. Oh, for sure. They have four conference champions in this in this region rather so i mean again this is one of those only regions where it's like it's it's okay to chalk here in the east region and now moving on to the west in the round of 32 here you have again two perennial basketball powerhouses in north carolina against the michigan state spartans do you think that hubert davis gets another win in march uh, yeah, I think UNC is able to get it done here, especially after losing in the ACC championship. I think they've got all the motivation, and, and I think this team has it for sure. I respect it. I do think that, if anything, North Carolina is able to get a couple of wins in March. How deep they go is yet to be seen, but nonetheless, Adam is going to go with North Carolina over Michigan State here. And now we have the two upsets, Grand Canyon against Charleston. Yeah, this is this is one that I don't really know. Right now I have Charleston. I might switch it later on. I, I think it's it's a weird game in Grand Canyon being a team that, that really likes to play seven guys and, and Charleston, a team that, that likes to go deep. I, I'm going with Charleston just because I, I believe it in the magic here, but I, I really I, I wouldn't be shocked with either. And that's the only pick that I think I might like change last minute uh, is who's going to win that game. But I'm just gut tells me Charleston. Yeah, I mean, again, it's one of those games where it's like you got to just stick with your feeling and just go with it. So nonetheless, Charleston moves on to the Sweet 16. And now we have the Clemson Tigers against the Baylor Bears and Nevada versus Arizona here. Do you think Ian Shefflin and P.J. Hall help the Tigers move on to the Sweet 16? I do. I love the, the this Clemson team. I, I think that they, they have the magic. Baylor's good. Not great, in my opinion. This year, the defense just isn't there for me. And so because of that, uh, I'm going with Clemson here. I just I, I trust Clemson. I don't necessarily trust Baylor ever since they won the national title. Haven't been great in March. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, this is not the 2021 Baylor team with guys like Davion Mitchell on the squad. So I wouldn't doubt if Clemson beats Baylor here. And now, do you have Nevada or Arizona moving on? Yeah, Arizona. Uh, again, Mountain West, don't trust Nevada. Makes sense. Caleb Love's squad moves on to the Sweet 16. And now we're moving on to the South region here with Houston versus Texas A&M, the Battle of the Texas Squads. Yeah, and I think Houston wins this one easily. I, I, I think A&M's good, not great. I don't think that they have any chance at beating Houston. I think if, if Nebraska wins that game, maybe there's magic, but, but not with A&M. 
For sure, for sure. I mean, you know, again, the Houston Cougars obviously playing very consistent. And even in the Big 12, which is their first year here. So, I mean, and, and they've actually managed to have one of the best defenses in the country all year long. So the Cougars move on to the Sweet 16. And now we have, I, I'm, I, at least from what I've seen in brackets, one of the most popular second-round matchups here, and that is Duke versus James Madison Dukes. Um, you know, again, obviously James Madison riding that hype against, again, the Duke Blue Devils who... I mean, let's face it. They're in March like, all the time. Yeah, but I, I have JMU here. Wow. Uh, again, I, wow. I like the JMU magic. I don't like this Duke team. I never liked Duke. I, I'm extremely biased against Duke. I, I grew up learning. You know, I grew up a Maryland fan. It was, it was you root for Maryland one. If Maryland's not playing, you root against Duke against all <laughs> odds. I, I don't trust the guards. I don't trust McCain and Roach. I think that it's a very soft team. I think Filipowski's soft. And in March, I think that those type of teams lose. I, I wouldn't be totally shocked if they lose to Vermont. Uh, I'm going to be rooting against Duke at all odds. I, I hate Duke. Duke is my least favorite team in probably all the sports. Uh, Filipowski is as soft as it gets. He trips people. Uh, I saw that, yeah. So, so, yeah, I've got I've got the Dukes here. I've got JMU. I mean, hey, I respect it. Sometimes you just got to bring in a little bit of personal flair into your bracket. So, JMU moves on here. And now we have a matchup that we've seen before, actually, in March Madness recently. Kentucky versus Texas Tech in the round of 32 here. Yeah, and I, I've got Kentucky here. I'll get into it a little bit more in a second. I think this Kentucky team is great. Oh, yeah, but for sure. Obviously, Rob Dillingham. And, I mean, that's just one of many, many talented players on this Wildcat squad. So, UK moves on here. And now we have a last four-in team, which, I mean... You know, I've got Boise State here. We'll, really? we'll find out tonight, but I've got Boise State beating Colorado, uh, beating Texas, and then beating Marquette. I, I don't trust Shaka Smart in March. I mean, the, the VCU run 15, 20, not more than 15 years ago at this point, I think, or, or was it 2011 maybe? It, it made me a VCU fan, so I love Shaka. But I, I don't trust Shaka in March recently. He hasn't been winning. Feels like one of these first four teams always goes on a run. And while I usually don't trust the Mountain West, I do like how this Boise team is built. And because of that, I've got this Boise team beating Marquette. It's a little more of me not trusting Marquette than me trusting Boise, though, because I also think Colorado can get it done as well. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Colorado having a very, very good year this year in uh, the NCAA season. And, I mean, apparently we have Boise State moving on to the Sweet 16. Another double-digit seed moving on to the Sweet 16 here and now we round things out with the midwest region number one seed purdue versus number nine seed tcu my cousin who actually went to tcu in almost all those brackets he has this exact matchup and for his own personal sake he has the horn frogs taking down the boilermakers but is this another shortcoming for the boilermakers i don't think it is i think matt painter has all the pressure on him in the world and because of that he's gonna at least make it to the second weekend i don't, I don't think they can lose first weekend and i don't believe in tcu this year yeah no i mean you know I, again as we just said, there's I, I don't think that there's really a, a way in which Purdue uh, you know doesn't last into the second weekend. So nonetheless, should be interesting to see how this in, how this Boilermakers team fares in March this year. And now we have Gonzaga versus Sanford again. Like you mentioned, Sanford riding a lot of momentum here. Yeah, but I, I like Gonzaga here. I, I really like this Gonzaga team this year. I think that they take care of the ball well enough where Sanford won't be able to turn them over. And the tempo won't necessarily uh, affect the Zags too much. So I, I like in Zaga moving on. I respect it. I respect it. You know, the Zags, you, you for the most part, they're good for two wins in March. So I wouldn't doubt if they're in the Sweet 16 again. And now we have Oregon versus Creighton. Obviously, Adam said he likes Creighton here. So we'll not spend too much time on that. But the battle of the UTs here, Texas and Tennessee, what are you thinking? I think it's a fun game because of, you know, the history with Rick Barnes. But I think that Dalton Connect is so good. And he carries this team at least to the second weekend. Uh, Max Abesmith, of course, he had the magic with Oral Roberts a couple years ago i just don't see it here i think tennessee's defense is just too good and because of it they'll be moving on for sure like like adam said the sec player of the year dalton connect has been leading the volunteers to a pretty pretty good year and even though they didn't perform too too well in the sec tournament i wouldn't doubt if they're in the sweet 16 again and now we have a matchup that i feel like a lot of fans are you know for the kind of ish somewhat iffy about and that is auburn and uconn here it's the one kind of team that i don't really fully trust UConn against but I, I just I think this team is so good I, I think that UConn has everything that you can ask for and more it has the experience and so I've got the Huskies moving on here okay I respect it I mean obviously this is one of the teams that actually genuinely might have a chance to repeat as national champions here so the Huskies get themselves back 
into the Elite Eight. And now we have the two I logos here, Illinois and Iowa State. Are you going with the Big Ten champions or the Big 12 champions? Go, going with the Big Ten champs. I don't love it because Big Ten teams don't always perform in March, but I, I just I don't fully trust Iowa State. And again, there's just so many guys on this Illinois team. There's so many players that I trust, big, big names. Iowa State doesn't have that, and because of it, I think that Illinois is, is able to move on and, and win this game. You know, I, I worry going all the way back to you know the, their first round game a little bit. Uh, I, I worry against BYU, but I, I think that Illinois has what it takes to make it to the Elite Eight. For sure. We'll see how Terrence Shannon's squad performs against the stout defense of the Iowa State Cyclones, and now we have a potential Cinderella run here if Adam decides to go with Charleston over North Carolina. Do you do it? No. Nah, nope. UNC. All UNC. right. UNC. We, we got the Tar Heels back in the Elite Eight once again, and now is another very interesting matchup. The Clemson Tigers against Caleb Love's Arizona Wildcats. What are you thinking? Yeah, I, I got Clemson here. Again, this is just like a, a vibes thing. It's, it's magic that I feel. Arizona was great all throughout the year, but but not necessarily against great teams, especially you know a- after the very beginning of the season, after they beat Duke and Wisconsin, you know, losing to FAU, losing to Washington State. The Pac-12 didn't really test this team at all, and I just feel magic about Clemson. It's it's hard to describe, hard to explain, but I just feel magic around this team. For sure, they they definitely have that vibe around them where it's like you know they they really could win some games here in March. So. The Tigers advance over the Wildcats. Also an ACC team that's low-seeded, I feel like, does well every single year. I think that the ACC is legitimately good this year, and because of that, I like Clemson a yeah. lot. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a pretty good ACC conference for the most part. And I mean, like you mentioned, when you are one of these like like six like five or six seeds, you're constantly playing at least decent competition throughout the tournament. So we'll see how the Tigers perform. And now we have again another potential Cinderella run here with James Madison versus the one seeded Houston Cougars. It dies here. Houston's defense is just too good. <laughs> I, I I fully trust Houston here to get it done. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just I don't I don't see any world where Jamie makes it to the Elite Eight. For sure, Kelvin Sampson has had the Houston Cougars as a as a perennial basketball powerhouse here. So the Houston Cougars move on to the Elite Eight, and now we have Kentucky versus Boise State in the Sweet Sixteen. Does John Calipari get his team another win? I think he does because yeah, I, I think Calipari is legitimately on the hot seat right now. I, I think if he doesn't make it far. There's going to be Kentucky fans outside of his house trying to get him fired. So I trust this Kentucky team with with Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard coming off the bench. One of the most fun teams to watch in all of college basketball, scoring 110-plus points a game at points. Uh, And because of it, I I trust this Kentucky team to really make a deep run. I I said earlier, I I do worry about the freshmen, but I I just feel like Calipari is on such a hot seat right now. He has to win. And because of that, I just I feel like I, I trust the Wildcats here. I don't know why necessarily, considering recent history, but I just do. I just like again, it's it's, it's a gut pick. The, oh yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, you know when you're a Kentucky fan and you're a fan of a perennial basketball powerhouse, you you're always you know keeping an eye on your team closer than most. Uh, fans would so should be interesting to see if the Wildcats can advance into the Elite Eight and now we have another matchup of perennial basketball powerhouses here between the Purdue Boilermakers and the Gonzaga Bulldogs do the Zags and Purdue season or no I I think so I think Grammy really? is wow. going to be able to get it done inside against Zach Eady uh, I, I loved him at Wyoming last year I think that Ryan Nemhard is, is so good a 10 plus assist in three straight games going into the tournament I, I, I liked this Gonzaga team all year long and I think that Purdue gets out of the first weekend but then I don't trust the, the guards going into the second weekend you know they're a lot better this year a lot more improved but I still don't fully trust Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith and because of that I have Gonzaga here and I just I think Gonzaga gets it done yeah that makes sense I feel you obviously this isn't the undefeated Gonzaga team that we saw in 2021 but nonetheless I mean and, and sometimes it's it's good to have a couple losses in the regular season just to kind of you know 
I guess, bring you back down to earth, if that makes sense, and just, you know, make you really, uh, you know, understand that, you know, if you lose in this tournament, you're you're done. So we'll see how the Zags play. And now we have what should be a explosive high-flying matchup between Creighton and Tennessee here. Yeah, I, I think it's really setting up to be a great game. I, I have Creighton here. Wow. Just because I, I think that when Creighton gets hot, Creighton can be incredible. And I don't know how much I trust the role guys on Tennessee. Tennessee offensively like Vescovy against Kentucky a couple weeks ago had no points I don't know how much I can trust Zakai Ziegler and I think that the this Korean team has enough enough guys who can make their shots they have to make the shots to win but I think that this is the year that Creighton finally does get over the hump I, I think that the defense is good enough and I, I think that the Big East is great this year especially those top teams and because of it I've, I've got Creighton here going on to the Elite Eight for sure. I wouldn't doubt it if they make it. Obviously, Creighton suffering heartbreak last year in 2023. So should be interesting to see how far the Blue Jays can get. And now we are in the Elite Eight. Three one seeds are in, and we have a couple of three seeds, three three seeds actually. So let's begin our first one three seed matchup, and that is between UConn and Illinois. Obviously, I think I know what Adam's going to go with here. Yeah, I'm going with UConn here. Again, I, just, I know it's a popular pick. I know the public loves UConn. But I think UConn is the best team, without a doubt. I don't trust Illinois to make it this far, especially to the Final Four as a Big Ten team. I just I think UConn is so solid in every single asset of the game. They don't have a single weakness, and because of that, I think this team is destined to go to the Final Four. You know, they have a tough region, but I think with Dan Hurley, he wants that, and that's going to help him going on. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt if the winner of the East region makes it into the national championship. So the Yukon Huskies are back in the final four in Adam Godkin's bracket on Stir the Pots here. And now our second one seed that's in the Elite Eight, we have the North Carolina Tar Heels versus the Clemson Tigers in an ACC matchup. And again, it's this Clemson magic. Yeah, I go back to the start of the year and the fact that this team beat Alabama, beat TCU, got it done in the non-conference. Every single loss pretty much was at home. Was on the road in really tight games. They, they got blown up maybe a couple times on the road, but other than that, they lost every single game very tight. Played the worst game of the season in the ACC tournament, but I, I, I truly believe that this team bounces back. I, I don't fully trust North Carolina. They got simply outplayed in the ACC championship game when Elliott Cadeau isn't, isn't balling out, when you know, Harrison Ingram and... and Cormac Ryan aren't playing their best basketball. This team isn't winning games, and and I, I just feel the Clemson magic here. I respect it. I respect <laughs> it. Obviously, you know, a seven-loss North Carolina team, you know, it could draw some eyeballs to it, but nonetheless, the Clemson Tigers, as a sixth seed, are in the Final Four here, and now we have, again, what should be a very entertaining game between Houston and Kentucky. Also, a very... It's a very satisfying logo matchup as well. <laughs> it is. It's going to be great colors, the red against the blue. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's you know, can Kentucky push the pace or can Houston slow them down? And, again, I, I think that this Kentucky team can get it done. They've been playing great basketball recently, especially. Uh, the one thing I like is that they're led by Antonio Reeves, uh, who's a senior. And outside of that, I think that the freshmen are going to be able to get it done. I mean, I, I think Reed Shepard's the best freshman in the country. He's coming off the bench. So is Rob Dillingham. There's so many great players on this Kentucky team. And at the end of the day, I, I just I, I don't trust Houston in a shootout. I think that Kentucky makes its shots. And, and I don't think that Houston's going to be able to make the same shots at the level that Kentucky can. Uh, I, I do worry that, that, that Houston's going to be able to lock them down. But I think that this Kentucky offense is legitimately just that good where it's going to be able to make shots at a high level. And because of that, it's going to be able to win these big-time games. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, they've been solid all year long, even though they are a three seed, they have been solid all year long. So should be interesting to see if the Wildcats can beat the Cougars in the Battle of the Cats and the Battle of the Colors. And our final Elite Eight matchup is Gonzaga versus Creighton, which... I mean, on the surface level, we should see a lot of mid-range shots taken in this game. It, 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 definitely, but I, I think that can, that Creighton's three-point shooting will do enough with, with Baylor Shireman and, and Trey Alexander. I think this is a Creighton team that's really good. Again, I think that the Big East is really strong, uh, a lot stronger. Uh, any other year, they, they get St. John's in, they get Providence in, they get Seton Hall in. Just got so unlucky with all the bid stealers this season. But I, I think that Creighton has what it takes, again, in the non-conference, beat Alabama, and, and 
I think Gonzaga is good, but at this level, I don't think that it can match Creighton's three point shooting. I respect it. I respect it. Like you said, like you said, like you said. Nonetheless, a great Big East conference here. I mean, obviously, they have been playing, you know, some really solid basketball. And even though the Bit Steelers might have gotten one over on the you know, on the on the tournament as a whole, this really just has been that that year where the Big East has proven to be just you know that great of a conference. And I think you know when we look at the, I mean, I just at the overall seedings here in the tournament, you know, you have a again a, a Creighton team that's in, UConn's in, I mean Marquette's in, and obviously you know St. John's didn't make it, um, you know. Obviously, like you said, Indiana State didn't make it. Seton Hall couldn't get in. But we usually see those teams in March Madness. But nonetheless, Adam Gotkin is going to go with the Blue Jays here. And we have a Big East matchup in the national championship. Here's where it all comes down to. This is where all the marbles are being thrown into. UConn versus Creighton in Glendale, Arizona on April 8th. I mean, it really doesn't get any better than this. This should this should be one of those games where you are seeing, I mean, just as a whole, fundamental basketball at its best. Hey, you, you skipped my final four picks. But, 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 yeah, as you said, it, it's UConn. I think that team is so good. I think that the magic comes to an end for Clemson in the final four. Creighton, Kentucky, I think, is going to be an exceptional game. I think that Creighton's rebounding is just enough to beat Kentucky, and and because of that, I have him moving on. And then, yeah, we get to that national title game, the All-Big East. It's crazy. In in a year where the Big East is just three teams, it's, it's two Big East teams that are in it. I know that a national champion is not repeated in almost 20 years since Florida did it, but I I, I trust this this UConn team from from the start of the year to the end. I thought that this is the best team in the country. Tristan Newton is awesome. Camp Spencer is a beast. I mean, you look inside, and they have, you know, I think, one of the best bigs in the country uh, as the center of this UConn team, you know, a guy who came off the bench last year, and I thought he was awesome. Now he's taking the big-time you know, big spot in Donovan Klingon. Uh, I think that this entire team rebounds well, which is really what's going to help them. I mean, you know, Camp Spencer and Tristan Newton are, are both – over four rebounds per game. Newton gets seven rebounds a game. Uh, and because of that, I just I think this UConn team is too good. My thing with brackets is I don't think you can subscribe to the thought process that just because everyone else is doing it, you can't do it. You, you can't change your picks because the public is on it. You got to trust yourself. You got to trust your picks. And I know it's, it's lame to have the number one overall seat winning at all but uh, I think in, in this year and this season where we've seen so much parity in the sport the one team that that has not really fallen to it is this UConn squad you know just three losses all season long I, I, I just I, I think that this team has everything that it takes to win in March an experienced coach again I, I've said this before I love Danny Hurley I think that his energy is at the perfect level where it's kind of crazy chaos but he's able to really it in and make sure that you know, he's the one who's going crazy not his team it's a team that always stays calm uh, and that can simply just do everything right you know shoot the three at a 36 percent rate they shoot 50 percent from the field a good free throw shooting team it's a squad that's got i think everything that you could ask for and because of it I've I've got UConn going back to back. I know it's lame to pick the number one overall seed, but uh, I just I, I trust the Huskies here. But at, at the end of the day, I, I think it's going to be an incredible march. And you know, I, I I've said this before this year. I wish I didn't have to make a bracket because it, it stresses me out. I wish I could just watch it because this tournament's the greatest overall. But uh, I'll, I'll be rooting for Kentucky in the end. Hey, I'm sorry, not Kentucky. UConn in the end. Hey, I mean, like you said, in any other year. It'd be a questionable pick to pick the number one overall seed. But in this season, in which, like you said, the one team that hasn't wavered, hasn't fallen, hasn't, you know, allowed anything to get to them and just has been really consistent and strong all year long is the UConn Huskies team. So anybody that picks UConn to win the national championship and repeat for the first time since Florida I respect it, and I and I could agree with that pick. Whether or not it happens has, remain, has yet to be seen. But, I mean... I, I I must say though, K- Kentucky in the Final Four, 
Not a bad pick at all. Really? No. And again, just back to that, that UConn thing once again, it, to me it feels like in the year that everything has gone so crazy and we, we've seen more parity than ever, I think it just makes sense that the number one team will win it all. Like, like, like what an end to like the craziest season. If, if it, at the end of the day, it is the top team all throughout the year who wins it. Uh, I trust my final four picks. Clemson, Clemson is the one that worries me the most. Uh, and, and it's about that first round game. I think if Clemson gets by New Mexico, they're, they're going to be able to make it. A lot of people hate that pick. Everyone loves New Mexico to win it. But, again, this was a vibes bracket for me. This was a bracket on feel. This was not a, a, a deeply analytical bracket. This is, this is a bracket of me trusting my instincts, of, of staying up late and watching every single college basketball game, uh, of consuming college basketball content all throughout the season, uh, of being someone you know, who listens to hours and hours and hours of college basketball talk throughout the year. I... I I just I believe in it. I believe in my bracket. I believe in myself right now. I'm not changing it at all. I might make a couple more. I have I have a, I have two brackets right now that are made. I have that one that I just went through. Then I have another one that's literally just called maybe I don't know ball. And maybe that one does great. But um, you know you know we'll see. The, the maybe maybe uh maybe don't know ball. Just in case anyone's wondering, I'll, I'll give the final picks for that. I, I have UNC winning my maybe I don't know ball bracket, uh, and UNC beating Auburn in the final. I can I can show you here. Wow, uh, let it, me literally see. it's called maybe I don't know ball, <laughs> and, and it's just a lot of changes. But you know I I, I trust myself. I, I trust my team. Uh, I I believe in myself. I I believe in my knowledge here. Let me see. We'll, let see, me see. we'll see how it is. Let me see what we got. We got North Carolina versus Auburn and. And Kansas against Marquette. Again, it's my it's my maybe I yeah. don't know ball. Maybe everything that I believe in is just wrong. <laughs> and so that's what this bracket is. But we'll yeah, see. We'll yeah. see. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I feel like every year, you know, like you said, you have your serious bracket. And then you have your bracket where it's just like, what if? Like, why not? And that is exactly what that bracket is. You know, obviously you have two banged up teams going into the Final Four. So should be interesting. But you have the UConn Huskies winning in your stir the pots bracket. So now I have to ask. Before we get you out of here, what are some things or just, you know, takes, thoughts, predictions, forecasts, foreshadows, whatever you want to call it. Just what are some things that you either expect to happen or do you think will happen or some trends that you think we could see in this year's tournament? Uh... I don't believe in the Mountain West. I think that's – if you go through my entire bracket, the number one thing, I think that the ACC outside of Duke, because I don't trust Duke, is a lot better this year than, than people make it out to be. Uh, and, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that there, there's a lot of, you know, interesting things. You know, I've got – three double digit seeds in my sweet 16 right now and i think it's possible i, I wouldn't be surprised if like we've seen in a lot of, of years before if we get a couple regions of pretty much chalk and then we get a couple regions of chaos but uh, in, no matter what what it is it's gonna be awesome you know th this tournament is, is the greatest sporting spectacle in the world there, there's truly nothing like it uh, and yeah, I, I can't wait for it to get started. I, I do want to say we, we talked a little bit about this about the bracket. We didn't get into to any of the bid stealers necessarily into any of the bubble. Uh, this is just something that I have to get on, off my chest, and because I guess I, I have this platform today, I have to. I was in a Twitter war last night for about four hours with a couple people about me saying that UVA deserved to make it in, and, and this is kind of my overarching final thought. Of, of why UVA deserved to make it in and, and why a lot of the picks that I have are the way that they are. I think that the non-conference schedule and what teams did in the non-conference is important. Games on November 7th are just as important as games on March 7th. In college basketball, that's what makes this sport so special. The fact that the first game of the year is literally just as important as the last game of the year. Does, I, I think you take out the, the dates, you look at the schedule, you, you flip-flop it around, and then you look at the teams. So if, if you look at a lot of the teams that I have going deep, uh, outside of really Kentucky, because I do think there are exceptions, it's not a, you know, there's exceptions with everything, Out, outside of Kentucky, you, you you look at Clemson going deep. This is a Clemson team that was what top top ten in the country at one point, and, and was or maybe they got it to eleven, maybe not ten, but was dominating at the start of the year. And, and I think that because you have a week off, because you have that time to reset, relax. I mean, Clemson legitimately has a week off in between games. I think that because of that, I, I can trust that that team to go far. I think that you throw out recency bias 
I, I think that you look at from the start of the year to the end, that, that ties back to me thinking what teams deserve to make it. I think that your non-conference strength of schedule means everything. I think that if you, if you don't play good teams early on in the season, then you don't deserve to make it in. It's what makes college sports so special. It's what pays off in the end, testing yourself in the beginning to the end. I mean, uh, I don't want to get too far into this, but, but my big argument in that at the end was, you know, the, the guy who I was going back and forth with was saying, you know, it, it takes a little bit for teams to gel with all the freshmen and transfers. You know, if they're not at their best in November, why do you hurt them for it? I think in college sports, you should be rewarded for having a team that has a lot of continuity. Your transfers and your freshmen can come in and supplement it like you've seen with Clemson. But again, with Clemson, the, the P.J. Hall and Ian Shefflin and Chase Hunter, these guys who are in the program and know it. And then you get Joe Girard in there, a transfer who fits the style. And I think that, that a team like Clemson who built it all throughout, has the chemistry all throughout the season, going into March is built the right way. And, and that's why I love this Clemson team. That's why I like this UConn team. Uh, you know, Kentucky's the one that kind of goes against. It, but again, you know, there's a senior veteran presence in there, and then that recruiting class was so good where it goes against it. And then Creighton, another team that you know has a couple transfers in there, but it's a team that has a culture that has guys who have been there before, and that's kind of my overarching theme throughout this bracket. Is yes, transfers great, freshmen great, but at the end of the day, continuity is what wins in March and what's what wins tournaments at the end of the day. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, when you're like you said, when you're making your bracket, you got to think about. You know, what teams have just, you know, not really got through, you know, too too big of slumps, uh, if, if that makes sense. You know, teams that, you know, I guess uh, if, if they lose a game, they might win three in a row and, and get their get back. Or, you know, if they do happen to maybe, say, lose two games, they don't lose for a while because they figure out what's going wrong and they fix it. And then, I mean, yeah, just a, as a whole, when you're making your bracket, you got to think about – what teams were consistent all year long. And like you mentioned, when they're not playing their conference opponents, regardless of how strong your conference is, can you beat those teams that aren't in your conference? Because for the, for the majority of the tournament, you're not even playing your conference opponents. So it's, I mean, th that's what it comes down to in this tournament. What team can stay consistent? What team can not, you know, waver too far from their game, their strengths? What team can... Just, you know, kick, kick it into that high gear and not let the moment get too big for them. And apparently this year, that team is the UConn Huskies for Adam Godkin. Again, as we all know, one of the best chances to repeat in, re in recent memory uh, in college basketball as national champions. So nonetheless, it should be, as always, an exciting and thrilling March Madness this year in 2024, which will all culminate in Arizona in or on April eighth, rather. So too late, by the way. That, that that's very late for for the national championship. Yeah, I I thought it was going to be on April first, if anything. <laughs> but no, nonetheless, again, as always, should be a very interesting matchup. And I mean, I actually, I also, I also thought that the tournament would have started last week, kind of like how it did last year. But I guess with the scheduling and everything, they had to make it the way it is. But as long as we get March Madness. All is fine in the world because for three and a half weeks straight, we are as locked as locked can get. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you, I, every other college basketball fan is going to be just, you know, emotionally, maybe even financially invested into this tournament. So nonetheless, it should be a very fun and thrilling March this year, which again will culminate in Arizona. And I think that is going to do it. For this episode of Stir the Pods, thank you, Adam Gotkin, for coming on. And actually, before we close out here, I want to make it known that Adam was actually supposed to be the 26th guest of Stir the Pods, and I had a human-slash-technical error here. I pressed every single button except the most important one, which was record here. And uh, obviously, I apologized to Adam in the past, and I knew – that I had to get him on, and I, I kept asking him, but obviously with this busy schedule, hasn't been able to get on until now, which there is no other better episode to get Adam on other than the one-year special and the March Madness special for that matter. So again, thank you, Adam, for coming on the podcast and, and supporting the program. I really appreciate your time. And of course, to the listeners tuning in week in and week out, I hope you enjoyed listening to Adam's bracket, and I hope that you guys have just 
been enjoying some, some, some great content that we've been producing here recently, and I hope to keep the ball rolling in the future. And, of course, to the people that have helped me get to where I am today and have helped, helped me just create this platform that I have where I can talk ball with some people that I love and you know have respect for and just enjoy talking ball as well. So, obviously, doing this for my career is just – it's been a blessing, and, and, and I cannot express how grateful I am. And, of course, you know, I mean, who, who knows how many more episodes we're going to have. But nonetheless, this is one year of podcasting, and it has gone by faster than I have – words that can explain it and i mean it's just it, it's been awesome and i hope to keep giving you guys another year maybe five maybe 10 more years huh? of i mean who, who knows <laughs> maybe 10 more years of stir the pots so nonetheless this was a fun episode always fun doing march madness stuff every single year so thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you all next week and we'll keep you updated on march madness so we'll see you all next week thank you <laughs>